You know that moment when you're on a diet and you're convinced you've got it all figured out, but then a wild donut appears? Yeah, we've all been there. Dieting. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Just when you think you've got it, some sneaky, sugar-coated temptation throws you off. The keto diet in particular seems to have everyone in a tizzy. It's like the cool kid at the nutrition party. But like every cool kid, it comes with its own set of challenges. So, what's the big deal with keto? It's all about getting your body into a state of ketosis, where it burns fat instead of carbs for fuel. Sounds simple, right? Well, not so fast. It's a delicate balancing act that can easily go haywire if you're not careful. The first hurdle you might stumble upon is not tracking your macros properly. What are macros, you ask? They're the big three nutrients your body needs. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. In the keto world, it's all about minimizing carbs and maximizing fats. But if you're not keeping a close eye on them, you might as well be trying to navigate a maze in the dark. Next up, we have the processed product pitfall. Sure that keto-friendly ice cream might seem like a godsend, but relying too heavily on these processed goodies can derail your diet faster than you can say, sugar-free. Then there's the whole food fiasco. Neglecting nutrient-rich whole foods is like trying to run a marathon with one leg. You might make some progress, but you're not going to get very far. Let's not forget the dairy debacle. Overconsumption of dairy products is a common pitfall, and it can throw a wrench in your keto progress. And finally, we have the hydration hiccup. Ignoring the importance of hydration is like trying to drive a car without gas. It's just not going to work. So buckle up, buttercups. We're about to dive into the top 5 keto diet mistakes you're probably making without even realizing it. First up on our hit list, not tracking macros properly. That's like trying to bake a cake without measuring the ingredients. Spoiler alert, it won't turn out well. Welcome to the world of macro mayhem, folks. If you're on the keto diet and you're not tracking your macros, then you're essentially flying blind. Imagine trying to navigate through a dense forest without a compass. You might think you're heading north, but you could be going in circles. In the world of keto, your compass is your macronutrients. That's your fats, proteins, and carbs. And let me tell you, they're more than just fancy words on a nutrition label. They're the building blocks of your diet, the ingredients in your keto cake, if you will. Here's the kicker, though. You can't just eyeball them. You need to measure them, track them, maybe even become best friends with them. Because guess what? Not all fats are created equal, and the same goes for proteins and carbs. Think of it this way, you wouldn't put diesel in a petrol car, would you? So why would you fuel your body with the wrong types of macros? You need to know how much of each you're consuming and where they're coming from. And let me debunk a common myth while we're at it. Being on a keto diet doesn't mean you can eat all the bacon you want and still lose weight. I mean, wouldn't that be the dream? But no, it's about balance and making sure you're getting the right amounts of each macro. Now tracking macros might sound like a chore, but trust me, it's easier than trying to do long division without a calculator. There are plenty of apps out there to help you, and once you get into the habit, it'll be second nature. So remember folks, counting isn't just for kindergartners. Your macros need some love too. Because in the end, a successful keto journey isn't just about cutting out carbs, it's about understanding the science of your food. And that, my friends, starts with mastering your macros. So remember, folks, counting isn't just for kindergartners. Your macros need some love, too. Mistake number two, relying too heavily on processed keto products. Just because it says keto on the label doesn't mean it's a golden ticket to weight loss. Now let's talk about processed product pandemonium. You stroll down the supermarket aisle, you see a shiny package saying keto friendly, and you think, well, isn't that convenient? But the truth is, not all that glitters is gold. And not all that's keto-friendly is truly friendly, my friends. You see, these processed products are often packed with artificial sweeteners and unhealthy fats. They might be low on carbs, but they're certainly not low on unpronounceable ingredients that would give a spelling bee champion a run for their money. They're like the wolves in sheep's clothing of the food world, enticing you with their low-carb labels, only to wreak havoc on your diet and your health. Sometimes these so-called keto-friendly foods can even kick you out of ketosis. That's right, the very state of being you're trying to achieve with your diet can be sabotaged by these sneaky little devils. It's like training for a marathon only to be tripped up by your own shoelaces. So, what's the solution? Well, it's simpler than you might think. Instead of falling for the flashy promises of processed products, why not embrace the humble whole food? Fresh vegetables, lean meats, nuts and seeds, these are the true heroes of the keto diet. They're nutrient-rich, naturally low in carbs, and let's be honest, they taste a whole lot better. But wait, there's more. 
Preparing your own meals with these whole foods also gives you control over what goes into your body. You can say goodbye to hidden sugars and hello to healthy homemade goodness. So the next time you encounter processed products parading as keto-friendly, remember this. Nothing beats the power of whole foods. They're the real deal, the true champions in your journey towards a healthier you. So next time you're shopping, remember, just because it's in the healthy aisle doesn't mean it's your new best friend. Coming in hot at number 3, overconsumption of dairy. Yes, cheese is delicious, but no, it's not a food group. Now I know what you're thinking. But cheese is keto-friendly. Yes it is. But there's a big difference between a cheese garnish and a cheese feast. You see, while dairy products like cheese and cream can be a part of your keto diet, they shouldn't be the main event. The problem with dairy? Well, it's a sneaky little devil. It's high in fat, which is great for keto, but it also comes with a decent amount of carbs. And these carbs? They're like those surprise guests who show up at your party uninvited. You didn't account for them and now they're throwing your whole keto balance out of whack. And it's not just the carbs. Dairy can also be pretty high in calories. So even if you're staying within your carb limit, overdoing it on the dairy can still lead to weight gain. And let's be honest, no one starts a diet with the goal of packing on the pounds. But wait, there's more. Consuming too much dairy can also lead to inflammation and digestive issues. And I don't know about you, but I like my gut to be a happy place. So if you're feeling a bit bloated or your digestion is a bit off, it might be time to take a break from the dairy. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should ditch dairy altogether. After all, where would we be without butter in our bulletproof coffee? But moderation is key. So the next time you reach for that block of cheese, remember, it's a garnish, not a main course. And if you're wondering how to replace all that dairy in your diet, don't worry. There are plenty of other high-fat, low-carb foods out there. Avocados, eggs, nuts, and fatty fish are all great options. And they come with a whole host of other health benefits too. So, let's ease up on the dairy aisle, shall we? Your body and your waistline will thank you. Lastly, but by no means leastly, ignoring the importance of hydration. This is not a drill, people. Water is crucial. Now you might be thinking, I'm not a cactus, I know I need to drink water. But let me tell you, on the keto diet, hydration is even more vital. When you're cutting out carbs, your body flushes out water faster, leading to, wait for it, hydration hiccups. So, how do you stay adequately hydrated? Well, first off, don't wait until you're parched. Sip on water throughout the day. Add a pinch of sea salt to your water bottle for some extra electrolytes. And hey, why not make it a little more fun? Try infusing your water with some fresh fruits or herbs. Remember, a well-hydrated keto dieter is a happy keto dieter, so grab a glass and raise a toast to hydration. There you have it folks, our top 5 keto mistakes to avoid like a carb-loaded bagel. Let's do a quick rewind. First off, remember to track those macros like a hawk. Don't let them sneak up on you like a hidden carb in a keto-friendly snack. Speaking of snacks, keep those processed keto products on the sideline. Your plate should be brimming with nutrient-rich whole foods, not shrink-wrapped imposters. Next we talked about the dairy debacle. Overdoing it with cheese and cream can be a slipperier slope than buttered zucchini noodles. Keep dairy in check, and your ketosis will thank you. Lastly, don't forget about hydration. It's as essential as a good avocado on this diet. So, whether you're a keto rookie or a seasoned pro, these tips will help you stay on track and avoid common pitfalls. Remember, the path to keto success is paved with good intentions and a whole lot of water. Cheers to a healthier, happier you. Before we wrap up, a quick reminder. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Share it with your fellow keto enthusiasts. And if you want more tips and tricks for a successful keto journey, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and remember every step you take towards a healthier lifestyle is a victory. Keep going, you've got this.